Welcome back to the channel guys. On today's video, we're going to dive in talking about five beginner mistakes that I see people make with bait casters. Okay, so you might have picked up your first bait caster and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this thing is going to change my life. It's going to make fishing so much easier because so many more capabilities. And then you go to make that first cast and it just birds nests like crazy. Looks like a huge mess that you're going to have to deal with for hours to get it picked out. Guys, today we're going to talk about ways to avoid those mistakes and make you a better angler in the future. Guys, if you like this type of video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and stick around. We're going to dive into these mistakes, and hopefully you'll learn something from it to make you better in the future. Number one on the list is not dialing in your reel. So like we said, you might have went to make your first cast and that thing birds nested like crazy right out the gate, ruined your day on the water before it even began because you didn't dial that reel properly. So when you go to dial your reel for the first time, you have to, you have to realize you got to take into consideration what the weight of the bait is that you're going to be fishing. So if you're fishing a very light bait, and that's what we have tied on right here. We have a little Bitsy Bug jig. It's a very, very lightweight jig. Since this is my smallmouth bait caster that I use, also running 12 pounds straight fluorocarbon on this. But you have to take that weight of the bait into consideration. So the adjustments that we're gonna be looking at making are gonna be with the spool tensioner, which can be found on the side plate of your reel, typically on the handle side. On the other side of the reel, you're gonna be looking at your magnetic braking system. So we're gonna look at dialing both of these in, and there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to actually dial in your baitcaster to cast the baitcaster for your first time. But we're talking about the five mistakes overall. But this one, you really want to see how fast your bait is gonna fall. So I let the bait uh, probably six inches away from the tip of the rod. I'm gonna press that thumb bar, and I wanna see how fast that bait actually drops to the floor. Our goal is to get it to where it just slowly drops to the floor. That's going to ensure that you don't bird's nest on that very first cast. And if you're a brand new beginner to bait casters, you can even tighten down the spool tensioner to where that bait doesn't even move at all. And that's definitely going to ensure you don't get a bird's nest. So we're going to dial that in to where it doesn't fall very fast. Okay, we got that dialed in. And then we're going to want to look at the magnetic braking system. With this magnetic braking system on here, if you're using a light bait, you really want to keep it for your first cast, probably between the maximum and minimum setting. That way you don't actually bird's nest and this be the cause of it. So what this does, you might be asking yourself what the magnetic brake setting does. So this slows your bait down before it hits the water. So it's going to be slowing your bait down in the air, but it also kind of has a little bit to do with how it backlashes. Uh, so you definitely want to dial this in as well. If you see that your spool, is spinning too fast before that bait hits the water, you want to tighten up this magnetic brake setting a little bit. Okay, and that's kind of how you go about adjusting this. If you want to find out more information, definitely scour YouTube search for how to dial in a bait casting reel, and you could probably find a lot of useful information to actually go in a little bit more in detail and break down how to actually set this up a little bit more. All right, so that was the number one mistake, and that is not dialing in your bait cast reel before you make that first cast. The second mistake that I see people make is not spooling their reel correctly. So what that means is they're not putting the line on the reel the proper way. And mainly this pertains to people that run braided line. So when people run braided line, you know, they're like, oh, I'm gonna switch out my line, put some nice high vis braid on this thing. I'm gonna make it my frog and rod because that's the cool thing out right now is catching big bass on those big frogs and using the heaviest power rod, the heaviest braid. Uh, so that, that's a cool thing, right? But what they do is they'll go ahead and spool it the same way they do regular fluorocarbon or mono. Where they go wrong is they loosely spool the braid on. And what that's gonna do is create a huge issue when you go to set the hook for the first time, that braid is going to get a lot of tension on it and it's going to sink down 
into the rest of the braid. So it's pretty much gonna cut down into the braid that's already spooled loosely on that spool and it's gonna create a huge disaster of a mess and you're gonna be trying to unravel that mess for a long time. So definitely, when it comes to spooling braid, you have to keep a lot of tension on that line when you're trying to spool it on. You want that spool to be super tight and that is gonna eliminate that mess when you go to set the hook for the first time. It's not gonna cut in to the rest of the, the line that's on the spool. So definitely, spool your reels correctly it's going to save you a lot of headache when you're out there on the water uh, when it comes to fluorocarbon and mono you still want to spool it very tightly you're just not going to have to spool it as tight as you would braid so hopefully this number two tip or mistake that you've been making can get fixed by spooling it correctly the third thing that we're going to talk about that beginner anglers make when it comes to a bait caster is not casting the correct way you might see people just bombing casts out. And if you're fishing on lakes and stuff and you're bombing casts out and you, you just bought your big bass boat and you're like, I cannot catch fish. It might be because you're scaring those fish away before that bait even you know, gets in front of them. So if you're bombing big casts out, you're fishing that huge 3 8 ounce jig, one ounce jig and you're just bombing it and it's hitting the water and making a huge splash you could be scaring those fish away before they even have a chance to react to that bait. So that is very unnatural to them. And typically with largemouth, they're gonna be scared away before they even have a chance to bite it. With smallmouth, you know, and I'm bank fishing, typically they don't really care if there's a big splash. It, it might key them in on that bait more than anything and they're willing to bite it. But, and that is not in every case either. But definitely work on your casting. A lot of beginners, they, they're just making straight overhand casts and it's not working for them. If you're fishing from a boat, definitely learn how to flip and pitch. Mainly pitching is gonna be what you wanna do. Uh, get out in your backyard, learn how to pitch that bait effectively. Have a little challenge with your buddies where you go out there and flip different baits into cups or different targets that you've pinpointed out in your backyard. Get better at casting, learn how to not scare fish. If you're one of those that do bomb a cast out, and you know, there's a lot of times where I'm fishing on the river or lakes where you know I do bomb a cast out, but I wanna keep the bait kinda low when I cast it, like a real fast cast. It's like throwing a fastball, right? You're gonna have, a, it's like a beeline instead of a big arch where you're throwing it way up high. But right before that bait actually hits the water, I'm gonna pull back a little bit on the rod, and what that's gonna do is kinda stop that bait before it splashes really hard and it'll kind of nicely land in the water. So this is something that you can kind of just play with and learn how to do it. Uh, and maybe you've already kind of learned how to do it just from experience. You're like, man, that I'm not catching fish. Maybe I'm splashing the bait way too hard. And you, maybe, maybe you are. So definitely learn how to softly land those baits in the water. And I think it's gonna catch you more fish. Okay, number four on the list of beginner bait casting mistakes is using too fast of a gear ratio. Once again, the cool thing right now is frog fishing. And yes, you do need a fast gear ratio to actually get that line kind of reeled back in and to pin that hook in that fish's mouth. That is where that fast gear retrieve actually works. And yes, you do need it for that. But when it comes to using a fast gear retrieve all the time, it's really probably messing you up. So if you're using a nine, three to one, eight, one to one gear ratio to fish a crankbait, you're fishing it completely wrong. And a lot of people say that, yeah, I can, you know, I can control the speed just by slowing down my gear retrieve. Yeah, a lot of veteran anglers can do that, but most beginner anglers are unaware that they're even doing this wrong. Maybe they bought a used reel and it's a nine, three to one gear ratio. And they're just out there just reeling it in as fast as they can. And they have no idea that that is messing them up and they're fishing that crankbait completely wrong. So definitely look to match your gear ratio to whatever type of bait you're fishing. So if you are frog fishing, cool, nine, three to one is gonna get the job done. But for crankbaits, definitely stick to those high six gear ratios or seven one to one gear ratio is gonna get the job done. If you're a beginner, 
definitely go for that seven one to one gear ratio. That's what I recommend. And that's what I still use just for about every bait caster I have is a seven one to one gear ratio. And what that's gonna allow you to do is if you do decide that you wanna slow down your reel to fish a crankbait, uh, fish a soft plastic or whatever, you can, you can control it a lot easier than having to fish that nine three to one gear ratio where you're literally, you would have to creep along to even get it to work the correct way. And then that ratio is so high the gear, it's, it's feeling like it's really hard to reel because there's no torque behind it to actually pull that fish in. So definitely look at your gear ratio, decide, am I using the wrong gear ratio to effectively fish the bait that I'm trying to fish? If you are using it wrong, definitely change it. It's gonna catch you more fish once you learn how to fix this mistake. Okay guys, the last one on the list, number five, beginner bait casting mistake is using too heavy of a power rod. And if you checked out my spinning combo mistake video, that was on there too. Using the wrong type of rod. Everybody likes to go out, get that heavy flipping rod, and they think that's gonna solve all their problems. And actually it's probably causing more issues than using just a cheap medium power rod that you can get from Walmart. And the reason being is you really want that parabolic bend in the rod see that little flex in the rod there, that is gonna keep that hook pinned once you do set the hook on that fish. And when you set the hook on the fish, something has to give. If you're fishing that heavy braid and you have a very stiff, heavy power rod, nothing is really gonna give. So nothing, there's not a lot of parabolic bend in that rod that's gonna keep that hook pinned on that fish. So that's why when you frog fish, yeah, you need that heavy power backbone to actually set the hook set those big thick hooks into that fish's mouth and then you use the gear ratio of that fast reel to get the fish in that way they're not going to lose tension on that rod you want to get them into the boat as fast as possible but when you're fishing other baits it's usually not the case you know if i'm fishing a soft plastic on a super heavy power rod and i go to set the hook and there's that fish is going every which way and there's not a lot of tension on this rod or maybe there was tension and then the fish went another way and it lost tension there is a high chance that you're going to lose that fish just because there's not constant tension on that line that's where maybe using monofilament where it gives a lot it has a lot of line stretch might work out really well if you're using a heavier power rod but for most applications guys if you use straight fluorocarbon like i have here or straight mono for most fishing applications, if you're fishing lakes or rivers, that's gonna get the job done. Or a medium heavy power rod is what I would suggest. That's what I have. I don't even own a heavy power rod anymore. I don't do a lot of frog fishing. Uh, so a medium heavy power rod, fast action tip, or a fast moderate action tip is going to uh, be what you wanna go for. So most combos that you get are gonna be a medium heavy fast action and that is, that's for a reason because most people enjoy this combo the most and you can fish it the most effective. So guys, if you're using too heavy of a power rod, it's probably doing more bad than it is good. So definitely take time to look to see what type of bait you're actually fishing and maybe you're fishing the wrong power rod that matches up with that bait. So definitely look to change that in the future to become a better angler. All right, guys, it brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you took something away from this video. We did talk about the five beginner bait casting mistakes that I see new anglers make mainly, and then some veteran anglers are still making these mistakes. Guys, look to change some of these mistakes that you're making to become a better angler in the future, and I think you're really gonna be glad you did. So guys, if you like this video, please leave a like, hit that thumb button. Guys, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. Also guys, subscribe to the channel if you're not a member already. And thanks for checking out this video. There's a lot of different videos out on YouTube that kind of break down different types of mistakes. I tried to go in a different direction of mistakes that I've seen personally and maybe were guilty of as well. And I've fished a lot of heavy power rods in the past and I didn't know I was making that mistake and I was using it the wrong way. Yeah, if you're fishing heavy, super heavy cover or whatever, that might be an instance where you want to use it, but most of the time, it's not going to be the rod of choice. So definitely, guys, hopefully some of these mistakes will help you learn in the future. 
And guys, best of luck out there. Become the best angler you can. And until next time, keep it blue collar.